Hello, everyone. Welcome in to the Impact Sports Podcast. Uh, my name is Nick, your host for the podcast here. I first of all want to welcome in our guest here and uh, say thank you for joining me here tonight. I look forward to our conversation here in just a second. Before we get started into our conversation we're going to have, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors, the Soul Ghost Podcast and Fast Pitch Films. Those links will be down below if you want to go check them out and go show them some love. Next up, I want to welcome anyone in that's watching this. So if you're hearing our voices here uh, tonight, uh, welcome in and thank you for joining us. Uh, hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button and check out our sponsors, like I said earlier. Uh, so now let's get our guest here to introduce herself and we'll jump right in. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm Paige Carroll. I'm from Cumming, Georgia. I'm a middle infielder and I'm committed to Georgia Tech. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Paige, like I said. So yeah, let's get started here. You just mentioned Georgia Tech, where you're going to be playing your college ball there. So take me back to your recruiting process. Let's go over that. Let, kind, of t- kind of walk me through what your experience was like with your recruiting process. Yeah, so it all started back when I was in like middle school. I was doing Twitter. I was going to camps. But really, it started like speeding up towards my junior year this year mm. and last summer. And I really just had to play my best, had to do all of that. And then right towards the beginning, I think all of my coaches, all of my hitting coaches, all of my travel ball coaches really prepared me for September 1st. And they told me everything I need to know about it. And it really just helped my mentality going into it. So it like calmed me down a lot. They gave me a lot of good advice. And I was just, I got to talk to so many coaches. And I think that day couldn't have gone any better. It really was just one of the best days of my life. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you, Paige, for sharing a little bit about that. I, I do appreciate that. And yeah, it's it's definitely a journey through that recruiting stuff there and a lot of the stuff that you kind of learn about. Like you said, you got some advice from coaches and, and people there. So thank you for that. So next up, uh, maybe it was through all of that, um, but what, how have you seen yourself really grow lately? Like this can be on the field, off the field. Like I said, it could be through your recruiting process or it could be just in general. Uh, what are some areas that you've seen yourself grow in lately? Yeah, so in my high school season, which was this fall, my um, high school coaches asked me to take on more of a leadership role mm. for the team. We had lost a lot of seniors the year before, and they asked me, the main thing was they they know I can play the game, but they want me to take on a role for the team. They want me to lead, they wanted me to lead the team, help a lot of the infielders grow, because we are we were a young program, and they asked me, they were like, we really want you to be someone they can look up to and look for for advice. And that is something that I really took to heart this year and I will next year. And then also in travel, I did just join a new team, but I'm looking forward to trying to grow as a leader for that team as well. And then just in the game of softball, I think I've really grown with my mentality. So mm-hmm. learning from failure, learning to grow that way. Like if I strike out, it's not it's not the end of the world. And I think I just yeah. have to grow from that. As like when I was younger, I might have been like a little hard on myself, but I know that you fail more than you succeed in this game. Yeah. And I've really had to grow with my mentality that way. Yeah. And it's, it's, thank you for sharing that. And it's hard to get used to sometimes understanding that like you may fail a little more than you succeed there. I mean, like you said, I, and you mentioned like you're kind of growing up in your age and everything. I think that's really comes from maturing, like knowing that like not every single like if you strike out in the first inning, yeah, you want to do your best, but you're going to get more opportunities in the second, third, yeah. fourth, and you know, so on there. Um, so thank you for sharing a little bit about that and leadership and everything. So next up, you know, what drives you to want to be great at your sport? You know, we all have different motivating factors in our lives that keep us going and keep us wanting to, you know, just get better and better as we've kind of talked about earlier, just growing and everything. So what is that for you? Just what keeps you motivated and driven each and every day? Yeah, so when I was younger, I always knew that I wanted to go and play college softball. I'd watched all of the girls in the World Women's College World Series, and I just know I want to do that. And so really what helps me grow is just looking at older players and seeing, like, I really want to do what they're doing. And so that's, like, my mindset. When I work every day, I work to play in college. I want to play at the top level, and I want to go to the Women's College World Series and the ACC Championship. That is – so that's really what I take when I'm like, this is why I want to play this sport because mm-hmm. of the older girls that are doing it. And I just look up to everyone in the sport. And that's really just what keeps me pushing every day and to do my best every day. Love it. Love it. Thank you for that. So next up, you, we kind of mentioned earlier, just some adversity and in, in, in the kind of the mistakes and failure that happen within a sport. So now when that happens, and I'll, I'll kind of paint you a scenario, which I kind of did earlier, but say if it's in the first inning and, and you, make a mistake, you have an error, or you're not doing as good as you you want to be doing out there. How are you handling that to not let it affect you in those uh, later innings there? 
Yeah. So obviously I have to learn from the failure that comes. So if I make an error, say it goes under my glove, I have to learn. I learn from that. I learn the next inning, put my glove down on the ground or I strike out. I learn what pitch I struck out off of and I don't do it the next time. It just like really changes my mindset on the game. Like I know I have to grow from failure. Failure is going to happen. And the adversity that comes is just one thing in the middle of the road. And you just have to get past it and learn from it. Mm, Yeah. And I mean, you mentioned it a couple of times now, even earlier. Now, the the one question I asked you kind of about learning from those failures and mistakes, like, okay, well, I did that here. Let's not do that again. Or what, why did I do that? You know, those kind of things there. So next up, I want to talk to you about your family, your support system, those people that are there, no matter what, no matter what the score looks like, no matter what your stats look like, how important have, have they been in this journey that you've been on? Yeah, my family has been a big part of my softball career. They're always there for me through like the worst of it. Say I have a really bad tournament. They're there. They're my support system. And I know no matter what happens in a game, I'll always have them there. And they really just help me a lot through the recruiting process. My dad always told me to just trust God's plan that he's giving me. And they really just helped me through the whole thing. My mom, my dad, my brother and sister who were in college, they always text me with advice. They're, my brother used to play baseball and he always, he didn't, he doesn't play anymore, but he used to tell me like, Paige, you can get through it. I used to go 0 for 16 in the game before. Yeah. You just have to grow from it. And they're always there shooting me text messages, telling me it's okay. And they really just helped me mentally through the game mostly. And I just always trust in them and I love them for that. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing a little bit about your family there. I do appreciate that very much. Um, so next up, let's talk about being a student athlete. You know, there's so many things you got to juggle, uh, especially, you know, for you at your age, you want to be a normal teenager. Sometimes you want to be, you know, a student athlete. You want to work in the classroom. You got all this, the, the softball stuff you got to do, which comes with a lot of work, travel, you know, games, all that. So what is some of the most challenging things for you just being a student athlete today? Yeah, um, definitely. The main one is time management. So I had to learn from freshman year of high school because I was playing softball in the fall. So I didn't have this like fall to really get used to high school. I had to just start from the get go and had to learn. I had to learn that I was going to have to give up some time on the weekends to get my schoolwork done because to me, schoolwork has always came first. Mm. And that's a big reason um, why I chose Georgia Tech, too, because I want to get a good education as well. And so being a student athlete, I just know. I'm going to have to miss out on some school events if I want to do what I really want to do in college. Yeah. And so time management has been the main thing for me and just learning what days I'm going to have to do my schoolwork and having a whole set schedule for it. Yeah. And I I mean, it's, it's so important too, because I mean, I've talked to juniors and seniors, even fifth year seniors that are in college now that have talked about just how every year from freshmen, kind of like you said in high school, and you're going to have to do that again when you get to the next level, like just kind of figure out like, okay, what works? Like, how is this going to work? Because that's another different schedule you're going to have to to do there. Um, so next yeah. up, you've kind of mentioned about some advice you've gotten throughout the interview earlier, you know, during the recruiting process, you said you got some great advice. So tell me a good piece of advice that you've gotten that's really just stuck with you through this whole thing. Yeah. So my parents used to tell me you can be as great as you want to be. So you just have to put in the work because you can have you can. The only way to be successful is to put in the amount of work you do. So no doubt people are going to tell you, like, you can't do this. You can't do that. But it's up to you how great you want to be in your career. And that's just kind of stuck with me because I know if I want to accomplish all these things in college, I'm going to have to work for it every single day. And that's kind of just been the one piece of advice that stuck with me through my whole career. Yeah, I love that. I mean, most time the things that's standing in our way is us, you know, like mm-hmm. our our minds. I know for me, yeah. I'll speak for me, that's kind of what it is. And I think that's such a good piece of advice there. Like, hey, if you want to, you know, be great, it's going to take work, but you can do that. You can go and do that work there. Um, so I love that. So last part here, and I'll let you get out of here for tonight. I just got some random questions here for you just to get to know you and have a little fun here. Give me your favorite movie and, and TV show. Okay. My favorite movie is Legally Blonde. Okay. And then my favorite TV show is Grey's Anatomy. Okay, nice. Which I think yeah. I've seen that they're going to be making a Legally Blonde TV show. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, you know, you might maybe. like it. I think it was. And I think um, maybe she, Reese Witherspoon's got something to do with it. I've seen her picture there. Now, it might be fake news. You never know these days. <laughs> but I did see something about that there. Mm-hmm. So you can look that up there. Okay, well, um, what about favorite musical artist? SZA's definitely my top. 
Okay, nice, nice. And then if you had to only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would you choose? So I had to, this was a tough one, <laughs> but I, I picked tortellinis. They're okay. my favorite food ever. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah. I like it. I, I can I can I can dig that there. Um, what about a place that you haven't been to? Because I know you travel a lot. Mm -hmm. So what's a place you haven't been to that you want to go? I have talked so much about this, but I want to go to Italy so bad. I think it's so pretty there. I got you. Yes, I agree there. Um, last one here. Obviously, we've talked about it. You know, your sport takes up a lot of your time. But give me some other interests and hobbies that, that you have or that you like. Yeah, so obviously I hang out with my friends other than sports. But I also really enjoy running. So okay. I don't like running long distance. I think it like clears my mind. It's really just been a passion of mine. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it's something not a lot of people say they'll enjoy, but <laughs> <laughs> I definitely agree though, that it is, uh, yeah. it's something that, uh, your mind is like, I remember talking to a, uh, a track athlete, um, and he's mm -hmm. very good at what he does. And he was talking about how that's one reason why he started loving running because of that. Like he just kind of gets out there by himself running and, and stuff like that, you know, there. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much for your time tonight. Yeah. I've enjoyed getting to know you here a little bit. Good luck with everything you have coming up. I'll definitely be in touch. I'll be checking back in you with on you because you know you're on a journey here. So I, I look forward to to seeing your journey kind of kind of unfold here. So thank you for your time and have a great rest of your uh, week coming up here. Thank you so much. You're welcome.